Michelin has always believed in being a good corporate partner as well as being a very active member of the communities we serve. Michelin has been an active member of Upstate of South Carolina since the early 70s where we opened our first manufacturing facilities. We have over nine facilities throughout the state and almost 10,000 employees. So at Michelin, we aim to live in harmony within the communities where we serve. And we do this by living out our purpose, which is to provide a better way forward for our employees, our customers, and the communities in which we serve. In 2019, I'm happy to say we celebrated our 10-year anniversary of a program we call Michelin Challenge Education. This program is centered around partnering with Title I schools within the communities that we serve, and we do many different things that include mentoring, tutoring, providing support services to those students. Another program that we're proud of is our workforce development program where we look to invest into the talent today and tomorrow for our workforce. And those programs include our internships and our co-ops, as well as two very successful programs. One we call the Michelin Tech Scholars Program, as well as the Michelin Apprenticeship Program where we provide opportunities for individuals in our manufacturing facilities to gain access with our company and start off with a great career. It feels great to work for a company that I know shares many of the values that I personally hold and we do that by using measurable metrics and so we actually record and report the number of volunteer hours that all our employees work with these different programs and we're proud of that and these programs range from as I said working in our community with educational programs, working with our workforce development or working with some of our initiatives with United Way and other charitable organizations. Our next honoree this evening is Dr. Elizabeth Davis, and she is the president of Furman University. She became the 12th president of Furman back in 2014. Furman, of course, is a private liberal arts university, the oldest private institution of higher learning in South Carolina, actually. Everyone, please welcome Dr. Davis. <laughs> Right, we're back with Dr. Davis. Congratulations. Thanks. So Rick. good to have you here. I know you had to drive over here from uh, from Furman, which is a pretty good drive, and it's actually pouring down rain, but right. you made it. I made it, yes. Good to have you. Here is your award. Well, it's an honor. I appreciate it. Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're here. Let's uh, pose for a couple of photos. Sure. All right. <laughs> virus crisis has forced us all to look inwardly at our own organizations to make some tough calls for the best of our organizations. Uh, we are here with Dr. Elizabeth Davis from Furman University. I know that's something that's been particularly challenging for y'all as you've tried to navigate what this looks like and what that looks like for next semester. So I know you wanted to speak to that on behalf of your own university. Yes, thanks, Eddie. I appreciate it. You know, I've been uh, president for six years at Furman. And this is probably the most difficult challenge I face, not just at Furman, but as a leader. Um, the pandemic has created so much anxiety, uncertainty, and you know we're about being together. That's what Furman is about. It's a residential campus. Uh, our faculty choose to teach in an environment where they have close relationships with students, and we've been apart. And because of uh, the uncertainties, you know we don't know what the fall is going to look like. So we've had to make some tough choices around. Uh, cutting um, or reducing salaries, furloughing individuals, um, even cutting a, a couple of athletics programs. And there certainly are armchair quarterbacks who are helping me know whether my decisions were correct or not. But that's really one of the things as a leader is um, to really understand the organization, to put the organization and the people first, and with compassion communicate the kinds of challenges and why why we have to do the things we do. Absolutely. And despite the, the challenges and what can be perceived as setbacks, there are also some inspiring moments mm -hmm. through this that really show you what you're made of. Do you have anything like that that has really made you proud of your university? Absolutely. One of my things that I like to do is to get good people in the roles in which they thrive and then just, just let them go. And to see how our faculty in particular have um, adapted how they teach 
and to be creative. One of my favorite stories is uh, one of our Spanish professors in a conversation class can't be there to have conversation, right? And so she connected her students with her nieces and nephews in Mexico and had the students learn to, to um, have conversations uh, with uh, people living in Mexico, interviewing for pretend jobs in Spanish. And it's nothing she had ever thought about before, but the pandemic actually has uh, allowed people to come become more creative and try to do even better uh, than what we might do under normal circumstances. Normal circumstances, right. absolutely. Well, listen, we, we commend you on all of these steps that you have taken and will take forward, and we wish you the best of luck. Congratulations on being a woman of influence. It's, it's an honor. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Rick, back to you. You know, these are challenging times, uh, Addie, and I just wanted to say to Dr. Davis, um, we appreciate your candor and your willingness to talk just a little bit about it. These are tough decisions you had to make, uh, but that's why you are uh, as influential as you are, and we appreciate you being here. Thanks so much.